born in 1977 to the late Mrs. Catherine and Stephen Kizak, Keith Kizak will come up in the Ninth Ward of New Orleans, Louisiana, the Desire Project to be exact. Just like many other troubled youth coming up in the impoverished environments of New Orleans, Keith, aka Kizak, would turn to the streets. In early June of 2000, dirty New Orleans police officer Tyrone Martin, aka Martin, would hack up Kizak, Stephen Taylor, and Corey Harrison without reasonable cause. Martin's excuse would be that Key wasn't wearing his seatbelt. Before Martin could hit the sirens, Kizak would bust a left into the gas station, hopping out of the whip where he would head inside the store portion of the gas station. Before Kizak could make it into the store, Martin would hack him up, demanding that he go back to the car. After learning that Kizak was driving without the license, Martin would arrest him on that charge. Without probable cause or a warrant, Martin would then search the car and recover four guns. The law states that an officer must have probable cause to search a vehicle or suspect without a warrant. Driving in a high crime area and not wearing a seatbelt is not probable cause to search an individual or a vehicle. This would be one of the many run-ins that Kizak would have with the NOPD. As years would pass, Kizak would eventually end up with convictions for gun charges, aggravated battery, robbery, kidnapping, illegal possession of a stolen vehicle, and resisting an officer. While doing time upstate, Kizak would link up with Stephen Anthony Joseph, aka Hot Boy Dooney. Both were highly respected in the streets and bout that trigger play. Killers respect killers. Around or about late 2008, early 2009, Kizak would meet and start dating Nadine Antoine. This will turn out to be your typical boy meets girl relationship. Nadine would be more invested in Kizak than he was in her. Kizak being from the streets was doing his thing, not wanting to be tied down in a committed relationship. Nadine's family would not like this, nor would they be happy with the idea that Kizak was a known gangster from the streets. They would hate the relationship and despise Keith. More in particular, Nadine's cousins, juvenile court judge at the time, Tracy Flemings. We'll get back to Judge Fleming shortly. That same year, on July 2nd, Brandon Morgan, 26, of New Orleans, will be shot dead on the second floor balcony in the 6300 block of Hain Boulevard at the Seabrook Apartment Complex in the New Orleans East. One block, two deadly shootings, 15 hours apart. That's the reality in one New Orleans East neighborhood, and it is leaving neighbors fuming. WDSU's Harrison Golden is live in New Orleans East, where police are still investigating what happened. Harrison? Sulla, this afternoon's shooting left one person dead. Last night's shooting left two. And it's leaving a lot of people in this part of New Orleans East losing count of all the crime they're encountering here. We all come out and there's a young man, bloodied, a bloodied body. Who, who wants to, to be awakened to that? Stephanie Johnson Saber barely slept Tuesday night. Gunshots woke her up again. The quality of life has just dwindled down to almost uh, Sodom and Gomorrah. We hear gunshots every night. She lives just down the street from where two men were shot and killed just before 11 p.m. Tuesday. And after 1 p.m. Wednesday, another deadly shooting on the same block. To see these young people just constantly killing each other, arguing, just the violence that's going on, not only in New Orleans East, all around the city of New Orleans. We as New Orleanians, we need to take our city back. She says that means taking action. Somebody needs to pay. If they don't give a damn about who they rent to, if they don't give a damn about how their units look, why should we give a damn about them? The complex's property manager was at the scene of Wednesday afternoon's shooting. He declined comment on the site's mounting frustrations, but neighbors close enough to hear those shootings say they're not giving up. It's something that needs to be addressed by all city agencies, honestly. Uh, they know it's happening. Uh, we have reported it. I know I have reported it. But what's being done? With no evidence besides being labeled as guilty by association, his act will later be pinned by the NOPD for the crime. Keith would obviously plead not guilty on the charge. Prosecutors not being able to get the charges to stick would be set in Kizak's court date multiple times. Waiting on his court date and looking to be released due to the lack of evidence, Kizak would do his jokes and continue his relationship while incarcerated up until 20. 13. During that time, Nadine would Joe's Kizak and visit him while he was locked 
up. In the talking turn of events, Judge Fleming will win the seat in the adult courts where she will preside over Kizak's case. Ray Charles can see that this was clearly a conflict of interest that would lead to an undeniable case of nepotism. In 2014, Kizak, still not having been to court for the murder and gun charges, would be convicted for an entirely different charge that had nothing to do with his initial case. Let's take a deep dive into the new charges, how they happened, what transpired, and what happened thereafter. The New Orleans Police Department is investigating a homicide in the Desire neighborhood. Around 8 a.m., police discovered a man's burnt body near the intersection of Florida Avenue and Alvar Street. Police say the victim was pronounced dead at the scene. Anyone with information is asked to call Crime Stoppers at number 822-1111. His act, who had been in Angola since his 2014 sentencing, will be accused of threatening Judge Fleming from behind bars. In a docket entry, the judge will recuse herself from the case, alleging the court received repeated threats and false accusations by Kizak and associates and an effort to intimidate her. Going on to say that she had been the target of a letter to her home address, phone calls to the court requesting information about her, as well as Kizak tagging her in Facebook posts. The judge refused to elaborate on the nature of the threats. However, a publicly available Facebook page and a blog site contain accusations of clear bias on her part as well as promises to be her at the polls were active, but neither would pose threats to her physical safety. Defense Attorney Phillips, who was representing Kizak on this murder case, stated he did not know anything about the alleged threats. Rochelle Kizak, the cousin of Keith Kizak, was infuriated by the accusation, stating that Keith never threatened Judge Flemings. She would further go on to say that the family never threatened her at all. All they did was start a campaign highlighting the injustices in Kizak's case. The Facebook page that bears Kizak's name and picture was confirmed to have been run and managed by Keith's family. In other words, Kizak doesn't have a Facebook page, nor does he post on one. Still, the State Department of Public Safety and Corrections would discipline Kizak. Kizak would be sent to the shoe, losing yard and phone privileges for six weeks as part of his discipline. The recusal order would be the biggest twist in the legal proceedings that have dragged on for almost nine years since Kizak's indictment on second-degree murder. The grand jury charged Kizak with murder in October of 2009, but there he sat in 2018, never having been tried on the charge. Kizak was still awaiting trial the next year when deputies conducting a shakedown of the old Orleans Parish prison will find a jack, aka cell phone, hidden in the wall. It will later be revealed that Kizak's former defense attorney, Jason Williams, had received text messages that Kizak had allegedly sent from the phone. Jason Williams would testify at Kizak's 2014 contraband trial that he had no way of knowing whether the holiday greetings and other messages came from Kizak or a family member. A six-person jury deliberated for less than 15 minutes before convicting Kizak. A contraband charge usually carries a maximum of five-year prison sentence. However, District Attorney Leon the Snake Canazero's office deemed Kizak an habitual offender, matching up his penalty from a minimum of 20 years to the maximum of life. Judge Flemings would opt for the maximum sentence. His act would later win a shot at a shorter sentence when the Louisiana Supreme Court ruled that the judge had errored in skipping over the required 24-hour sentencing delay after denying Kizak's motion for a new trial. The murder and contraband cases will be transferred to Judge Fran Zibilich. In October of 2018, Judge Franz would resentence Kizak to life imprisonment as a habitual offender on a single contraband count. Judge Franz would leave open the possibility that Kizak could one day qualify for parole, but he would cast doubt on its likelihood. Going on to say, and I quote, What your record reflects, sir, 
is clearly a lifetime of crime and criminal activity. Incarceration is not only necessary, but a significant jail sentence is appropriate. Kizak will show no emotions as the judge handed down his sentence. This was the story of Keith Kizak.